Content warning. This video was designed to expose a modern sexual abuse cult that is attempting to normalize and create the acceptance of sexual acts between humans and animals and creatures. These people have been known to be involved on some level, often enough with pedophilic practices as well, child predation and things of the sort. In this video, we will be showing censored images demonstrating some of the types of things these people have produced and what they're trying to market uh, in the purpose of exposing them and creating awareness, not promoting the content. Consequently, it contains some images which the viewers may and possibly very really will find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. My personal belief is that all humans have a God-given moral conviction that when they encounter the presence of something evil, something harmful to humanity, and they take the due diligence to do the study, do the research, and find the evidence validating the story as true, that they are obliged to expose it and sound off the alarm bell and warn people and take action to combat that evil. That is what this video is about. Hello there, Eric McRae, Asparagus Party here, coming in with the last video of the series of exposing the sexual abuse and sexual exploitation cult that is attempting to normalize and legalize sexual acts between humans and animals and creatures. And we've been shedding a ton of light in this series, exposing a massive amount of darkness, a massive amount of cor corruption, and rebuking a massive amount of lies and fiction that the culture has put out. Uh, where, yeah, we are being trained to normalize and accept uh, abuse and at times even murder and horrific acts that are basically um, poisoning people and killing people. Yeah, that's going on in our culture. We've been fighting it, we've been rebuking it, and we've made massive progress. And we've basically, throughout this series, laid the whole thing out and openly exposed it and really brought that system of abuse to a place of condemnation. And that is great and that is wonderful, but it's not enough to do that because you can't take out the corrupt and evil power that be and not bring in uh, the things that replace and fill the void with the healthy, proper stuff. You can't like take away, you know, if people are eating mud to fill their stomachs because they're starving, you can't then take away that mud and then give them nothing. You have to give them the vegetables, you have to give them the bread, you have to give them the water. Um, so it's not enough to get them out of this uh, horrible cultural programming. You have to provide a valid infrastructure for correcting the issues and making sure we don't simply re repeat the cycle and return to the slavery, that we're not like um, those Israelites who they come out of the slavery of Egypt, but the slavery of Egypt still in them. If there's no, you cannot be brought into any figurative promised land if you're just planning to rebuild the same old altars of your doom. You must have a change of mind, a change of heart, and a change of your way of doing things. And there's really two types of suggestion I'd like to put forward uh, for the changing and fixing of our culture in regards to these sexuality issues. And I honestly suspect that one of them people are going to have a harder time receiving. So. The second part of this video, I'm going to get into exposing the fact that I'm sorry, but though you might have some 19th century and 20th, 20th century philosophers whose writings you like very much and you revere these people, the fact is some of those philosophers in question, some of those social narrators have really been mostly the source of your problem and your pain and your misery. They have brought most of the sexual abuse and rape with their misconstrued idea and their ideologue. Some of you have been literally complaining about the sexual perversion and the rape and in agony about it and then you will go on the same hand a firm an oration and a narrative that basically legalizes the acts you hate. So I will say this bluntly. For some of you who come from that certain background of belief systems, in the second half of this video, after I get past the more immediate practical suggestions that I'm sure you'll probably have no problem with, I am going to put the negative spotlight 
on philosophers whom you might have developed an unhealthy relationship and respect for. Because honestly, the sexual abuse, the normalization of this STD spreading behavior, the corruption, the, the ability of humans to philosophize and reason, this idea that somehow maybe it's not really so immoral for people to be raped, tortured, and killed and laughed at, and that this idea that maybe it doesn't matter at all anyways. You know what? Some of you have had philosophers in your life who have been doing this or you've been receiving teaching and instruction, especially those who've been indoctrinated in colleges and universities by basically exploitative teachers and professors who hold loyalty and have basically taught you and maybe at some points half dishonest watered down teachings, but really the teachings of those guys. And I, I will call them out. So. I hope that you'll in the very least, if you are unable to receive my calling out these people and, and really to tell you what for many of you, what you, you actually have a problem. Some of you, again, I know you hate the rape and the murder and the molestation. The thought of somebody grabbing a four-year-old girl and spreading her vagina to have a dog penetrate her with this sickly rape murder culture, that offends you. But again, some of you, your social, the way the world is narrative coming out of the mind of two men in particular, Darwin and Marx, has basically enabled that. And you have effectively a philosophical, societal version of Stockholm Syndrome, like the woman who falls in love with her own rapist and is continually abused and degraded by him and has no self-respect and is destroying her life. That is you. If you have not made a connection with all these increases in, of these things in our society and the teachings of basically the Darwinian worldview that man is basically an animal or a glorified animal at best, as well as the combination of the, the Marxist concept of abolition of morality and family, you have failed. And as it's like, I can give you the little suggestions that you're like, okay, I agree. In the short term, this should help us. But you reject that concept 20 years, 30 years later, you implement the steps that are going to fix up your culture a bit, your culture will immediately start backsliding into the worst of it because you have not addressed the root issue that is creating the problems. It is a combination of variety of social narrations. And actually, to be fair, it's not just Darwin and Marx, though it's mostly them, but it's also very much one part element of the Christian church, by the way. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to be fair here. There is a Christian church narrative, which is basically a highly misconceived concept of how predestination of salvation works and how salvation of how confessional salvation is conceptualized and works that is basically spreading the idea um, from the what is supposed to be the proper moral agitator of the people to move them towards what should be done. Unfortunately, the church that was supposed to teach the people and had all the right resources just started vomiting out half-truths and garbage and basically helped out that element of culture that wanted to destroy anything, everything, sorry, not just anything, literally everything and anything though is applicable. And actually in very many cases this was the churches that had to direct melding of their Christianity and their Marxism and Darwinism. So I hold them very much to blame because they are very much to part in blame and it's right to shame them and hold them as guilty because they are. That doesn't mean I want to kill them or put them to death or any stupid radical thing like that. But when they've played a role, and they have, I will put the guilt on them that they deserve and only the guilt that they deserve, no more and no less. So that's part of this. So now I'm going to give you I know some of you will be upset about that. You'll be hurt because you've been holding this unhealthy love of these philosophers and these people who have been basically influential teachers and people in your life who you've form formed a really unhealthy emotional bond to. Um, you've formed an emotional bond where um, you have this affection for them, but they are not repaying it to you as you deserve with the full truth and with an honest care for your soul. However, if you cannot accept that, if that's still too hard for you, at least hear the first bit of my suggestions. Since I know many of you, you I hate to say it, I don't look down, down on you. This is going to sound like I'm arrogant, I look down on you. I really don't, but I know many of you will not be able to accept this. Because it's hard to admit 
that one of the people you looked up to and believed was the person protecting you and defending you was actually your figurative rapist and molester destroying your life. If you are in one of those relationships in your life, uh, as we all have been in, at least in an ideological sense at some point, it is very incredibly painful and hard to confront. So I do have patience, but honestly, there will be a day where if you really want the best you can have, you will have to confront it. Until then, the best you can have is a watered down result or something just kind of coming slightly cl close, but not quite satisfying the spot of what your heart and your soul truly is programmed to demand from you. So with that out of the way, let's begin with short-term solutions that even an anti-theist who has a bit of reasoning capacity, even an atheist and anyone, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, if I tell you these things, I don't think most of you are going to contest anything that I'm going to say, at least in the first bit of this. You are going to be in absolute agreement because I've been talking with you people. I've been meeting with you and sharing discussions. I've been watching your videos and some of you have been watching mine and I've been finding we're mostly in agreement. Though we have points of disagreement for sure. We have points where we'll de denounce each other's ideologues, um, traditions or sacred beliefs on some level or some portion. We do have points of agreement, many of us. And I'm going to start outlining a system we can implement to at least find the common ground that will make a healthy democracy functional and protect its sexuality from this insane nonsense that we've been reproving and rebuking in the past few videos. I will come up with something very sound. So let me put forward some general rules of thumb of things that if you want a healthy culture, it doesn't matter what your proud, you know, ideological upbringing tells you. If your ideological upbringing is telling you anything other than these things I'm telling you right now, it is just simply wrong and uneducated and it's time to learn and grow up and change. And I don't look down on you if you have a bad ideologue because I once did have many bad ideologues. So it's not like I'm above you. We all make mistakes and we all have to grow. That is it. There's no shame in it. Rule one, do not accept prostitution in your culture in any form, period. Fight against it, shame it, boycott it, do activism against it, and put it to the curb. And do not let prostitute men or women try to portray this as somehow protecting the women engaged in it from further or worse sexual exploitation. Because the level of sexual exploitation and abuse and the thirsting lust that has created it began, culturally speaking, do your homework in the West, it began with a gradual acceptance of the practice of prostitution. And if you believe any otherwise, you are simply naive and deceiving yourself. You are probably not following logic, truth, and moral rightness. You are following maybe the sexual inclinations of your genitals or something else, which is not wisdom and not something you can blindly follow if you want a healthy functioning culture. First, understand Prostitution is like one of the major roots that all this filth is growing out of. And then that leads us to point two. You cannot accept the pornography and the pornography culture. And it's not as innocent as you've made it out to be. And you need to grow up if you think otherwise. And that includes the hentai and the anime pornography. Absolutely. And you can be proud all you want. You can say, my body, my rights, nobody's going to tell me what to do and what I can record my wife and I doing and not record. But that is just your ego. The fact is, our predecessors' reckless actions in playing games with these things has clearly, massively multiplied this undeniable health spawn of all the sexual sickness we're now drinking out of and basically vomiting out our own guts from. We are riddled with STDs. We are riddled with broken minds and broken hearts from broken families. 
and and god forbid we still have mentally ill marxist psychiatrists trying to make us psychologically debate the meaning and importance for like a a child like a a young son to have affirmative words from a father and a father figure as if the state teachers are doing are, are able to replicate that and replace that and all the gar the garbage and nonsense these fools speak or the same thing for a mother in case there's somebody who says yeah fathers are good but get rid of mothers no there is no substitute for them. Again, this is why I'm harsh on the Marxism. It's just a wrong idea, and you're wrong if you believe it. And it's time to fess up, because if you deny me, you're like, I know better than you, you don't know what you're talking about, you better humble yourself and just look at the world around you, because all this filth that you hate and it's torturing your soul, it came from those ideologues. It came from that mindset, and that's going to get you nowhere. And I'm sorry, I, for those of you watching my video, please, if you are not the type who's been fighting in defensive like that, if you ever hear me angry or coming off as in a dominant or pressuring way, it is never directed at the humble people. It's directed at the proud, stiff-necked, stubborn people who are just too stubborn to admit that they're hurting themselves and others. But the ones that are humble, they don't need to think that you know like when you are in the workplace I've had these days when like I was in the workplace in Hillman in the warehouse and all these guys were crashing the the brand new um, material handling equipment and they gathered us to all together and the supervisor was kind of furious and was complaining and the the supervisor they're not thinking that if you were one of the people who are literally just there on your first day of work and just transferred from the previous facility and you've not even touched one of these machines that you should cry and feel guilty they are literally sending out a general address that is meant to kind of guilt trip some people or being reckless you're not necessarily intended target so if you're humble know that i'm not upset at you it's just the arrogant people who keep trying to defend these things yes prostitution and pornography are your chief problems in abnormalizing sexual drives and creating a massive almost irresistible demand for all this stuff which is obviously including rape I mean you're like where's all this rape coming from okay maybe it has to do with something that there's pornography and these guys are penetrating women and they're grabbing their necks like this they're spanking their bottoms saying you're just an effing child um, your women are screaming F me and by the way nobody should romanticize that word we use it at times because we're so enamored with a culture that it just smothered us with the curse words but really it is exactly that it is a curse word there's no correlation between a man and a wife and his wife as you know engaging in some actually romantic beautiful act of making intimacy between another and this word that's basically coming from a a, a term of misery effing is what the women say of the men who are raping them it's what the men who are raping the women say of the thing they're doing to them it's not the same thing as love making or whatever else you have in your mind and there's nothing romantic about it and we need to define between two different types of sexual intercourse and sexual act that are completely discernible from one another because one has nothing to do with mutual affection and love or anything sacred and everything to do with um, pleasing sickly tendencies and abuse and every wrong idea but again pornography and prostitution or prostitution and pornography you want to know your problems and culture that's a good place to start start fighting against those things start exposing those things and don't let these these you know prostitute kings and queens and I, by the way do you know why I say queens the one of the few people I've seen arguing in defense of prostitution ironically has been women who run women's brothels and I kind of understand this idea that they're, they women know, know women that they're going to spread among themselves. But really, there should be no prostitution. If women need a job, it's not a job to provide oral stimulation to random men's and women's genitals. It is not a legit job, and it's not a job to be penetrated by people. There are no shortage of warehouse factory jobs. There's no shortage of restaurant 
you know, waiter and waitress jobs, there's no shortage of employers. And if employers are in, in, in making a form of discrimination that's just too high level to make it impossible to succeed in anything else, then maybe that needs to be looked at if there's too much trouble getting in there. But there is literally, financially speaking, that system of prostitution and certainly pornography literally adds nothing to our economy. It's not even needed. It's not necessary. We do not benefit from it. It has added no cultural boon whatsoever, period. You have to face the music. The pornography is a tool of social reprogramming and reprogramming and hijacking human sexuality. Nothing more, nothing less. The parents who brought it into... Imagine all those well-intended men and women who wanted to get married and they had this idea of happily ever after. But they brought in the pornography or maybe usually the man brings it in and the woman at first is offended, tries to fight it, but he's so stubborn and stiff-necked to listen. And eventually by being stubborn enough, she just gives up. And when they give up and when they get to the point that they're just going to let it run its course, yeah. Did that start eroding their family? Did that start eroding their relationship? Did that weaken them and later weaken their children in diverse ways? Yes. And did it often end with the pornography? Historically, none of you lie to yourselves, no. And it's the same thing with the women, because yeah, it's usually the men, but when women try to pretend there's never women doing it when the man is not doing it, like there's no reverse scenario ever, it's not entirely accurate, and it's always the same thing. They start with pornography, and they say, I love you. I'm only dedicated to you. This is just this is just a material to help me because there's days where you're just not in the mood or not available. And I need I need release. And it's not it's not about you. And I, I, I want to slap people when I hear them saying that in, in that context. Um it's a, such a sickly and selfish act. I mean I'm not condemning people who have been pornography addicts or are pornography addicts and have a problem. I'm not condemning people who have masturbated or are masturbating. And the reality is everybody ends up doing it at some points. But you've got to be serious and say it's not a pro-marriage behavior at some point. And just smell the coffee. Smell the flowers and wake up to the obvious reality before you and stop being... You can't just be a baby and be like... Are you going to cry for a porn magazine? Like, let me, let me, have you ever looked at the mirror of your life and seen it for what it is? And there's this lifeless porn magazine or this lifeless porn website that you're so hurt in your heart from whatever abuse you're suffering in your life with your work or your this or your that. And you're going and you're opening your heart to this dumb, stupid screen that is giving you bad ideas, making you sick, helping you ruin, script yourself and program yourself to ruin your life. And in the end, you have no intimate friend or partner anyways. It's taking the stuff that was intended to help you bridge the gap and make that intimate fr sacred friendship with the actual partner. And it's giving you not even, it's not even giving you like five dried kidney beans. It's giving you nothing but misery and affliction. When do we start admitting that? When can we grow up? Because until we can come to a point where we say that's exactly what's happening, till we can admit pornography is a virus, a Trojan horse in our culture, our battle for our sexuality and our happiness will not make much progress. The battle to stop people from raping your daughters and sons and abusing them, and by the way, at times killing them and murdering them, cutting them alive, traumatizing them for life if they manage to survive, that will not stop until you start a confrontation with prostitution and pornography. You will get nowhere. I assure you that. If you think otherwise, you don't know what you're talking about, and you don't know history, and you haven't done your due study, because the studies are in, and they have been done. The only people fighting them are the lying psychiatrists who have literally been accepting money from the porn industry tycoons who have been accepting bribes because that is what happens by the way you have to see the corruption I know you don't want to because it hurts because you see humans have a problem we have pardon me we have many problems naivety is chiefly a massive one 
naivety is like ultimate problem number one, but problem number two is sort of a type of conservatism that using the word this way has nothing to do with your political inclination. It means when you have that system that is utterly morally bankrupt and corrupt and it's literally if you don't get that out of the way you and your future people your children you're doomed every it's just a murder rape fest but the problem is shake up the system and what do you get you get resistance you get false accusers you get people harassing you sending you death threats bad emails sometimes the occasional squabble or fight and um you have hard work you have to make videos like I'm doing, possibly 10 hours of videos and then another 10 hours, then another 10 hours. You have to re-educate the populace. You have something called hard work and hard work causes you something called a certain amount of pain and suffering. You want to know what will always destroy your happiness and the future happiness you would have had in your future life? An aversion to any and all pain and suffering. A hedonistic mindset that can never sacrifice pleasure at any moment that can only pursue pleasure as a value that will sink you and your culture faster than a stone mill dropped into water so you have to deal with it pornography is poisoning people's minds by making them unable to find sexual gratification from the original design that was perfectly fine and needed no improvision and no improvement. And again, I, I try not to push this on to too much because I know some of you can't handle it, but this is really connected to social anti-theism, this Darwino-Marxist concept. Because, and you're like, no, no, you're fighting me on this? You really want to take me up on this? Who is it who keeps promoting the idea that what we originally had in, as humans was not good enough and we need to invent a billion new technological forms. We basically, who's promoting the idea that we need to evolve? Tell me. Who's promoting that idea? Not the Christians, not the Muslims. They're not promoting that idea. Who's teaching the idea that we need to do, oh, let's do, let's get into genetic modification we could reprogram the human body this is not good enough we need better than this we can do better than this guys whose whose narrative is that tell me who's the one going to say our sexuality as it is in its original intended format is not good enough we can do better the grass is greener there's this theoretical edenic paris paradise and we were held out on for by the creator we were not given something good enough there's better out there i know there is whose narrative is that is that the narrative of the theists or is that the narrative of your social Darwino Marxist nonsense you better start owning that you want to know where all the broken painful torment sexuality is coming from it's coming from you self-harming people who keep promoting this idea that you can on you have a contradiction you know what a contradiction is it is this idea that on one hand you can affirm abolition of morality and then on the other hand you're simultaneously going to get the happily ever after boons that only happen in the context of an active system of morality being carried out. That is a contradiction. You invite Darwino Marxist ideology to make philosophy for religion morality and make a narrative for the history of religion and morality, you have invited the very force that creates all this. I'm sorry to pick on you, but ideology and belief systems in do influence human behavior. And ever since the West moved towards this stuff, especially starting at late 1800s, our sexuality and our sexual health has only de been declining. STDs, anyone who tells you they have been, they ha did not increase from that time or only increased proportionate to population increases is lying because I myself have seen the data and charts out of all the institutions like the CDC and they tell you an obvious trend. It's like literally, especially after the sexual revolution of the 1960s, you notice the graphs for STDs go straight up. You are physically, do you know why you're not taught this in your public schools, which you're not, most of this is censored, because your anti-theistic Darwino Marxist psychopath professors are obsessed with you not believing in there being a God. 
And I don't even care that much if you do or don't. I'm not even necessarily trying to force this on you as much as you think. I'm just telling you the fact. You know why they don't let you have the data? See, a person who cares about you won't care whether you believe in a God or not. They'll say, you're about to make some sexual decisions for your life that could harm you because, listen, here's what has historically happened to people. We have done studies, here's the body of data, here's the SDD trends for these behaviors that you're thinking about doing. And they won't give that to you on a biased basis of whether you believe in a God or not. They give that data to you because they want you to be able to know what you're getting into. It is literally no different than when we have people buying cigarette packs and they are we forced the cigarette companies to put warnings on the packs and it's not wrong. It's the same thing with some of those pharmaceutical companies where the drugs have the warnings of the side effects. It's the same thing that we're supposed to have open disclosure agreements so that when you sign an agreement, you're able to know the potential negative implications of it. It's for your own good. Censoring that information doesn't help you. But guess who did it historically? Yes, anti-theists. In other words, even though we Christians and Muslims fight among ourselves, and we Christians fight among ourselves, and Muslims fight among themselves, and all, and Hindus, and all so on and so forth, and you're sitting in your little bubble world like, ha ha, cave, religious cavemen, you know what these people don't tend to be too moved to do? They do not tend to be too moved to censor f factual data for things like STDs from you. Because their more intrinsic morality systems not all of them, but some of them have some amount of it's not okay to lie to you. And if they don't, by the way, they also have something called conscience. So even if one moral dictation is not as sufficient as another and not all religions are maybe equal or as good, the fact is you have a twofold system. So if the religious dictation fails or you know the, the figurative Bible people are using, then usually you have this chance that conscience will intervene, the heart will kickstart in that internal instinct that says something is deadly wrong and it knows it for a fact in spite of whatever all the liars around them say. But there is one system on earth that has more than any other been inhibiting that system. And it has been the narration of Darwin or Marxism because it has a way of making philosophical reasoning questions on everything that was never subject to questioning. This is exactly what the Bible talks about, about people who are sick about questionings. They, they, are, they, they really don't know what they're talking about or doing. They're not thinking straight. Their, their thinking is diluted by all this drugs and hedonistic pleasure trips so they can't think clearly. They're just looking for the next high or they've had so much pleasure overload and dopamine overload that they're knocked out of their clean out of their senses. Their thoughts are not organized and sensible in any way. That's what's been going on in our culture. Anti-theists, again, what did they have to do with the censoring of the STD data and all the data for the broken, emotional crippling, by the way, is another data they censored. So in the psychological and psychiatric communities, guess what? They were coming out with data that was showing that this single parent lifestyle and this kind of Marxist anti-parenting parenting thing put up in cases, many cases encouraged by major wealthy companies like Play-Doh and stuff. All the people want to basically make you slaves and have no emotional intimacy in your life whatsoever. They started finding great evidence that this was actually making people sick and weakening them. Who censored it? Again, same people. Anti-theists. People who don't want you to believe there is a God. Namely, Darwino-Marxists. Primarily them. And you know why? The why is ridiculous. So all, if they cared about you, they would have told you there's this data so you could act in the interest of your health and your mental health and well-being and your sexual health, avoiding STDs, and make better decisions. They censored it because they were afraid you'd make the correlation to this is evidence there's a God. You know why they did that? Because we have all these religions that say there are is some divine power, some God, some deity, and it said sexuality-wise, you must not do this, 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 and this is the way it's done. And the STD data pointed out evidence that there probably is a divine power because if 
you're constantly getting sick every time you do that you break the the script every time you do those things where it says do not do not do not like the ten commandments do not it's evidence that there's a active moral power in the higher universe enforcing a punishment for the violation of said laws the laws don't make themselves and the punishment for the laws don't make themselves there's no evidence that it's sort of a self-existent nature only and like some outside power who is powerless observed it and made a book talking about it through studying through science that's a great idea and even that would have been a better system than what we have with the Darwin and Marxist which they do not affirm but that's not even right it's just factually you've got all this evidence pointing to that in these things so the things that are the most basic things for you having a a basic structure for being a healthy living human being they censor it out of their personal offense against the idea of there being a god they have to bow the knee to at some point in the future it's pettiness nothing more sheer pettiness made them censor the very stuff that was going to save your life that is the fact anyone who believes otherwise is uneducated on the topic and is just being stubborn and in time culture is going to admit to this because i've done the studies i've done the historical breakdowns i've done the data correlation and i've seen the connection and it's an undeniable connection not everybody's going to be silent on it forever those two belief systems again which part of darwinism so is everybody who believes evolution happened a massive threat to humanity it's kind of a yes or no thing it's the ones who take it the most seriously in the context of believing it as a origins narrative who not only believe it as an origins narrative okay this concept that an unguided process with no god random spontaneous generation basically repackaged uh, which is a previous bad idea from a earlier scientific era evolution is just the sort of attempt to revive reviv revivify that idea um, spontaneous generation and the idea that this thing went back and happened without a god and development from bacteria to human kind of thing um, from single cell organism to human um, it's a narrative designed to exclude a creator no god needed for creating us and our, our very complex genetic programming in other words they want to have the concept of like you guys have probably gone to your science uh, computer science classes done some amount of coding your turing your c plus or whatever and you understand that in a way in in those codes it's words and with words again tied to numeric data values and then a slapping on textures and polygons maybe a bit of an oversimplification but something like that you are creating these little game worlds your world of warcraft you're this you're that well guess what it's not a new concept what did the bible say in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was with god and through the word of god the world was created programming script information based universe this is not a new concept it's been known by ancients we're we're only figuring it out now because we're we're see we're the generation that questioned and it by the way it's not always super wrong to question there is such a thing as questioning too much i don't think that uh, you know having an inherent question just because of the corruption of various institutions of course it's fair to ask the question but we're the generation that's actually been delivered somewhat the evidence and we're still being stubborn about this but it's kind of before you and we're always looking to reason it away and play a blind eye to it just because we just don't like the idea of there a god being a god who will judge us and make up laws and rules for our life and most of the reason we don't like that concept is again because of corrupt humans who made laws and rules in our life based in human wisdom that were stupid and did not work and now we judge the whole concept of whether that exists or not based on some dumb human i don't think that's a good concept but i again if you think I really care that much at the end of the day, whether you believe in God or not, um, and I don't care what the Christians are going to judge me for that, and saying you should care, he's going to go to hell, because most of these ones who rush to say that are hyper judgmental, and they themselves are not making in the kingdom of heaven according to their own Bible, so I don't take them too seriously. But it's just, this is all a part of it. There's a reason things got this way. And the reason did begin with anti-theistic dictators who were not 
The problem with them is they were half intelligent. And again, it's a matter of history and this is very correlated to our sexuality because there's no such thing as these segmented systems. It's all connected and related. The teaching was not segmented on this level in the past where it's like sexual experts and experts of this. Everybody had some knowledge of everything in the past. And you see all that scientific development that happened, especially around the medieval age moving forward, came on the backs of hardworking theists and mostly Christians if you're living in the West. And yes, the occasional Muslim scientist here and there. Yeah. And, and, and probably a few Hindus, but it was really coming on their backs. It was not coming on the backs of some anti-theist group. That wasn't even possible or sustainable. The whole basis and backdrop for our scientific development that made us feel so good in, about ourselves, like we're so smart, came from the presumption that there was a creator who created the universe. And why is that important? If creator created the universe, then it is a ordered universe which he has organized. And it's not a chaos universe. It's not random. It's not spontaneous generation. It's not RNG, wait for particles to miraculously collide in a one in a billion, billion, billion to the power, billion, billion, billion um, circumstance that never happens ever and is really, you know, it's, we we literally call that numerically impossible long before we get anywhere near the kind of numbers they pull out of their hat. Um, this idea of a miracle without the miracle maker, it's all stupid. It's literally dumb. I don't, again, I, I'm not, and I hate that I have to have this conversation because then you guys accuse me of I'm just trying to convert you to a Christian or something and you're, you're being stupid. If you have not made the connection of your sexual ethic to your ideological narrative, it's time to do it. And I will, I will get into that more in the future. So again, your defending of prostitution and pornography and any ideological system and so-called teaching system giving you a concept of what is morally acceptable or not that is saying that's okay that's your problems to start with something to look there and in the very least okay so what do we do about pornography okay i admit pornography you're right eric I'm sorry, I've been fighting you, I've been a jerk to you, I've been mocking you, putting you down. You're right, pornography is a problem, I agree with you. I can't deny it, the studies have all been done, It's it, the writing's on the wall, what do I do? What do I do? I may not be willing to, that stuff you're talking about, divinity and all that, I don't know about that, but I'm willing to hear you out this time. What ideas do you have to suggest? What can we do? Is there any way we can at least get a step closer to better, whatever better is? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so pornography and pornography exposure is an important part of what these sick, mentally ill, controlling elites are using to poison our human sexuality to keep the average populace down and keep themselves up so they can feel superior to, to us, basically. Um, how do we go about restricting and controlling it? Well, first, we have a lot of legislation legislation, discussion, and legal battles to go through. And obviously we can't just be lazy, not hardworking, negligent, slothful, and incompetent. Uh, the first step to improvement is to take it seriously and get involved and, and start figuring out exactly that because maybe we don't, don't even know what we can do to fight back. We don't know which parts of our legal systems have been corrupted and modified and changed over time for a more useful original format and we don't know which parts of our legislation always right off the bat need reformation because the passage of time and technological developments has brought us to some very different era because all this think about it we've been trying to address 21st century problems with a concept that is in many cases 150 or 200 years old in some cases and I'm not saying that the morality needs to change at all for those general things that even in the in our functional dem democratic previous society had I'm not saying we need to change it much um, but we need to acknowledge that the, the development of technology has changed a lot cell phones 
I mean before there was no radio then there was radio then there was television um, television improved over time with their various forms then there was gaming consoles gaming systems of, and all the games and the things tied to them economic systems made to reflect those and laws for economic systems imposed therefore little groups trying to profit off it and profit battles legal battles copyright battles um, all this technology in the span of time is like getting a technological exponential exponential increase it's like thousands upon thousands of times of technological development it's like jumping by literally thousands of years over the course of just a mere 20 to 50 years and it's no longer at a level where you can just say okay let's deal with it with just the base structure of our previous law for managing sexuality and sexual ethics even when that sexual law and that sexual ethics law is correct and it's the right basis it's never taken into account the idea we have very few laws in our most oldest forms of the charter at least that have done any mental calculation on the thought of wow people are going to take cameras and record somebody having sexual intercourse or what that even means those discussions almost never even happened we are behind the times in discussing the morality of pornography we are behind schedule from where we should be this is why we're sick so we need to have more discussion on this and figure out exactly that what we can do but I do have suggestions and thoughts so I will provide you the bare minimum so the first thing is we've got to at least get to the point and I, I'm not personally I will tell you I am not satisfied with the bare minimum I think the people who think the bare minimum will be enough are incredibly naive foolish deceivable gullible and that if you make a bare minimum culture over time it'll still collapse but in the very least bare minimum is better than bare naked so let's start with the bare minimum if you're if you've come to the idea that adults are 18 plus and uh, you know there's going to be big problems with that and in case some pervert thinks I'm going to take the numbers down actually I'm almost tempted to increase it because you want to know something in reality because of the dumbing down of our educational institution and the infiltration of these drug lord drugging insane people watering down the education um, the rules for sexuality at 18 plus they might have made sense numbers some number of years ago but some of the people's maturity level at that age right now is not what it was in ages prior um, many of our people where previously people had a more adult like mentality at 18 now you're coming in at at least for many people 25 to 30 now I'm not saying to strike the idea of age 18 out but my point in telling you this is to make you feel ashamed about our culture it, on a right level we have to reform our education system that's going to be a massive part of this we have to retake the education system and raise the level and retrain people and specialize in public education and making the stuff that heals our culture as much as possible available for free widely available and and fixing and bringing in fixing and healing um, the people who are doing the work of public education like the people going out maybe set, doing a seminar on the middle of your street and you like young street or something who are telling actual sexual truth and not this Nar darwino marxist neo-marxist garbage if they're doing it for free maybe consider throwing a donation their way or in the very least if you see them give them a bottle of water or something like support the people who are trying to lift up your culture is a is one piece of advice that's important and secondly identify the need that your culture's maturity levels have been greatly tampered with and now go into this with a mature mindset and consider the weight of that and then ask the other question so okay if we accept 18 plus as a point where a person were mature enough to look at pornography or make a decision for it themselves is it enough let me ask you this question all of you think honestly are you telling me this is enough to protect the young people 
who up until that point maybe we agree they shouldn't be exposed to any of it if you agree that they should at least by by be before age 18 it should be illegal to expose them to pornography why do we have a system that's like this that if a young per person who's curious sexual curious for whatever reason regardless of the question of however that was triggered and oftentimes again social programming psychological priming reprogramming it's triggered prematurely when it's not natural but okay if you assume there's this massive temptation of young men and women to say i want i want to like you know kind of in layman's terms that horny feeling and they want to seek it out why have we thought this is wise okay i go to the pornography site and oh are you 18 hmm let me think do i want to see porn i'm not really 18 but they don't really have a way of they're not checking and they don't know maybe their person has a certain amount of fear but it's just a basic intimidation tactic and they already know most people don't get any trouble so what do they do click is that enough is that you do you really mean to tell me i feel like punching the porn people in the face right now repeatedly i won't enact my feelings but man these people are such lying jerk dishonest like they know this is not good enough are you kidding me so to view so much as the skin flat of a skin flash of the arm of a potentially nude person in these pornography contexts the bare minimum should be enforced there should be no viewable pornography site period unless someone has done a full registration with some kind of correlated id and some verification or something to prove their age and pornography industry does not want that by the way they're going to be like outwardly they might pretend to be your friend but they hate the idea of this you know why because now it becomes harder to make porn addicts because porn addicts are the ones buying their crappy product but free thinking healthy protected people have had a chance for natural sexual development have a lower demand for their garbage and a lower ability to be brought into it and retain them and squeeze the money out of them and pornography industry is just like a sickly person who who wants to squeeze and suckle the money out of you that's basically its goal money it's it's doing nothing good to merit it's there's many better things to invest your money in than the pornography industry and the sex industry this is not an industry you want to have suckle on you so you've got to you've got to deal with that if you bring reformation to your society's laws over even something like that and have it enforced that's a good step in the right direction and yeah and now the frustrating part is i think we should have a positive attitude if we do this but again it, it could literally be too late because you know how much battles we're gonna have to do to whip these lazy jerkwad money leeching scumbag porn websites into implementing a change they might be required by law to do so yes and now you have the other question of the legalities of the issues of different nations with different morality law concepts so what happens when germany wants to be stupid and Canada wants to be smart and we have a shared internet now we start having problems so I don't know how much legislation you can do and I know somebody's gonna always come and point a kind of legitimate point to a level you have limitations in your ability to legislate morality which is absolutely accurate and I agree and you don't want to be overbearing sometimes but in the context of this let's be honest you have to legislate those predators into a very boxed in place or they just predate your culture so what do we do do we need sectioned internets for countries now it's frustrating because one country being dumb punishes us all uh, it's really frustrating independent internets or like internets that are literally managed I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea that's the problem this is why it's kind of a moral gray area because now you have the question of control 
And is there such a thing as good control and bad control? And can you can trust somebody who initially started with good intentions to end up good and not abuse? And it becomes very complicated. But maybe the technological developments being sped up was never a good thing to begin with. Maybe I have to start asking the question, were we better off without TVs and radios and phone, cell phones? And if somebody says you're not allowed to ask that question, maybe they're being a domineering, controlling jerk that's trying to hijack you for original human purpose. So in case you think I'm trying to suggest something to you on this one way or the other, I will tell you the honest question. In terms of a question like that of technological development, I'm not certain. How to legislate this is incredibly, incredibly difficult. It's the problem with government and legislation. But... There has to be some amount of it. So we've, we've got to get those porn sites under control. We've got to limit their viewability in some way. We've got to do something to hinder them. So obviously option one is if we could somehow convince the porn industry to accept a register first to view concept that requires driver license ID, pinning the age or something, um, that probably still wouldn't help because then again, is the pornography industry even going to be honest? Or are they going to say, well, oh, her, her ID card says 16, but let's just let this one slide and say, okay. See the problem? <laughs> the pornography industry, if anything, they're an industry that can't manage themselves and it's so much easier to just say make pornography illegal in my opinion it's literally i i hate to go there you guys are debating can you have half in half out if it were up to me no pornography website survives and we burn your physical computer equipment servers down to the ground if you do that and we make you suffer financially you lose everything that's the easiest solution to this. Just burn down the pornography industry to the ground. Solution one. Solution two, if you're too immature to accept that, the importance of that, find some way to impose more severe restrictions and sanctions upon them. Now, if you can get past the phase of dealing with the pornography industry itself, now you have to deal more with and again, we still have the issue of the sexual predators and the leftovers who of... Imagine if you grabbed back your sexual culture and its sexual ethic and somehow redeemed it and grabbed it back from the hands of death. But you have millions and millions of people who, out there who it was too late for them. You acted now, but for those people who needed you to act 20 years ago and 30 years ago, now that many of them have already been reprogrammed into sexual predators. So what do you do about that? Now you need you need a very strict system in, in, in dealing with the sexual predators. So we'll get to that in a moment. But in terms of protecting your youth, priority one. You have to retake the school system. Your education system has been stolen. It's been corrupted. Your public schools are corrupted. Your universities are corrupted. Your, your college campuses are corrupted. Your colleges are corrupted. Your, all the professors. You've got to retake those systems. You've got to purge those systems of the predators somehow. Again, this is why nobody... It only got to a point where it's this painful, this hard, this difficult, and this intimidating and overwhelming because people were negligent for so long and kept saying, I'll deal with this tomorrow, I'll deal with this tomorrow. And they did that for like another 20 years, another 20 years, and now you're going to... It's almost become slavery of yourself to, to fix the problem. That's the reality. It's just a massive, massive undertaking. So number one is, yeah, combat the prostitution, combat the pornography institution, try to limit their visibility, try to hinder them, and simultaneously re-educate the public. All the data that they've been censoring and raising up lying BS fake psychiatrists about or hiring people to lie any cover-up you find any hint and so much as a, a small sniffing of a cover-up or something that exposes what they're doing in the lies 
publicize it, sensationalize it, preach it on the street corners. It helps. Expose them. Preach out at them. Shout about them. Shout it on the rooftops. And when they say, shut the hell up, and some random person says, nobody's listening to you, don't believe them for a second because somebody is listening to you. And usually, often enough, when you're discouraged, it's like God is with you. Somebody will come say, don't believe that for a second. You're, having a, you're making a difference because you will make a difference if you shout out the truth to them. you got to reprogram the populace from its previous reprogramming that has led it astray. You have to give them the ability to see the truth that has been censored. So start telling them all, the, all those websites with the data and the fact sheets for, that are showing pornography makes it impossible to have a happy marriage. It makes it impossible to have a family. It does this, it does that. It, go out there because, yeah, you have those dum-dums who are, who are making themselves dum-dums. I'm sorry if I'm putting them down because maybe they were in some senses victims too, but the people who don't understand the value of marriage and family and the sacredness of it, it's very, very hard to help them. But there are some who, who want that and they don't know how to get there because the waters have been murkied by people who are trying to make that decision for them. If you shout out the truth that helps them get there, they will appreciate you for it. They're not going to fight you as much as you think. Any time you publicize facts and statistics and the truth that has been censored that reveals the, the problems of this current sexuality paradigm and its, and its root initiators, any time you shed light on the topic, you are doing the right thing and you are helping it improve. You are helping bring us back to where we should be. So that's very important. Um, we need more of that. Uh, it's one of those situations where the quote really stands true. Uh, the field is kind of great or the work is great, but the workers are few. We need more workers to restore things. Now, legislation for the to, to bring in a understanding, we need legislation that identifies pornography. We need, we absolutely need legislation that identifies pornography and starts identifying exposure of a minor to pornography by anyone as a crime and does not simply punish them with a slap on the hand, even when it is themselves a minor. And I don't care whose mama I offend in saying that, it is just a fact. Because again, you have gangsters, you have thugs, you have drug runners who somehow get young boys in their, in t under their control. They enlist them in the public school system and do the same abuse that the abusers abusing women uh, are doing. All the Stockholm Syndrome, the psychological manipulation, they do the same thing to the young boys, young girls, to get them to expose people to porn. And now what do you do about that? What do you do when you have agents slipped in the system by the filthy pigs to try to bring your kid in, in public school and say, hey, hey, look at this. Look at this sex. Look at this. Well, you just let them off the hook and give them a little uh, suspended for, for a week. They probably don't even want to be in school. And you don't talk to my and I'm not saying that punishment alone is you have to you have to heal though you know those young children who are being used that way obviously their souls matter they are important they should be somebody should be trying to drag them out of the fire and help them and help them get free of the slavery of whatever bad parenting scenario they're in there needs to be more discussions with them but you have to end the exposure of pornography to the students and the children. Anyone, it should be illegal to do that to anyone, at least anyone under 18 at the very least. And there needs to be at least a discernment of two classifications of punishment. One for whatever you recognize as a you know, competent, culpable adult or whatever. And then the punishment for the, the person who's a 15-year-old exposing fellow people to porn. There needs to be a system to punish these people. Even if they're still a minor, they cannot just be let off the hook because if you let them off the hook with these light punishments, they don't learn consequences of action and nothing changes. And this is the problem with our culture. It has been so mamad. 
and we don't need a mama uh, we need mothers but we don't need a mama culture where mama get overlooks every bad thing um, baby boy does you need some punishments and same thing for when women do it it's no different or, or 15 year go 15 year old girl exposing boys like if you had a 15 year old girl trying to strip nude and lure young students into sex with her or whatever the fact that we said what's the big deal it's all normal anyways and didn't punish it was a mistake as well yeah there should be legislation punishing these things stop normalizing it stop saying You've enabled the culture that's just creating the, the peer pressure, dumb dumb culture that's like, well, if you hadn't had sex by the time you're 14, you ain't a real man. Why, why do we enable that? Why do we help that along? And yeah, I, I get some people are going to argue, well, you should have the mental faculty to resist that. They could resist it. It's not that big a deal. But frankly, if people engage in sexual intercourse in the schools and again I'm not should you put bathrooms in a minor like in the bathrooms that minors go to in school put cameras there to spy out for people having sex no this is why I don't like public schools to begin with I'm starting to constantly debate whether a public school system should be tolerated to exist or not because that's such a massive problem that kind of thing exactly is a problem I think it was maybe the public school system was a dumb format to begin with I'm, I'm more and more wondering about it but uh, parentage is probably a better option um, the pursuit of wealth made us elect public school system because it's it's fun it's lazy to do you can have sex and throw your children in there and the idea they'll be educated for you and get to have more fun um, but we never asked, we were slow to ask what was the cost for that. What, in exchange for that easy time value, was was there something being subtracted for us? That's another important conversation to have. Maybe homeschooling really is the only option. Like, I can't do all your thinking for you, but you've got to not be afraid of asking those questions if you want to get anywhere. Um, for me, if I do get married and have children in the future, I'm personally, personally, I'm probably, if the way things are, I can't see myself sending them to public school. It'd be like, here's the child predator is like, hey, I'm going to penetrate your, your five-year-old daughter. Do you want to give her to me? Um, no. No, I don't. Why would I do that? No. No, I have no intention of that. I think it's, it's become very dumb. So in the very least, you've got to ask yourself if you if if for whatever financial reason. And by the way, this is why it's such a frustrating topic. Other systems become corrupt besides just sexuality system. Is our financial system corrupted? Is there greed slipped in? Are landlords overcharging for your rent? Is the whole system working to make it impossible for you to protect your children? Then there are reforms needed in other parts of your other sectors of your society. You need much anti-inflation elements. You need a release of some amount of land plot or something like that. You need less legislation making it harder to build a home. You need all the rules that are making it possible to create a, a safe place for the normal people who want to just raise their children in a obviously normative human sexuality way uh, away from all this, this insane social programming. Um, there should there shouldn't be so many bars to make that impossible now of course you have safety rules and laws and legislation um, but there is so much laws and legislation around everything land ownership building where it's basically a mafia making sure they take just enough money to make sure you cannot protect your children when the system works against you like that a mere reform and reformation of our, our sexuality laws alone will not be enough. You'll have to overhaul various parts of the system simultaneously because there's multiple corruptions that have brought us to this point. I never ever meant to suggest that our sexuality was the only issue. It's just one of many. And again, most of it's spawning from the same problem. Um, but again, you always have to balance with how much you legislate because, yeah, ideally people will choose to be generous. But then 
the other hand of that is I don't promote communism. I think communism is a really stupid idea. But there is another point. You have a radical greed where somebody's just hoarding the wealth of society and setting up a system to enable them to do that where you can't necessarily play a blind eye to that and let that happen. So you got to figure it out. You got to talk about it. You got to discuss it out. Um, you've got to make a network and a system that's possible for, for people to do actual real humanity and not this this fake dystopian Darwino Marxist fantasy world where you can have sex with a robot one day and a dog the next and then you can when you finally have too much STD so I'll, we'll just create a robot and I'll upload my consciousness in that abort that stupid idea and you're you're gonna be healthy get you know shut the mouths of the people doing that and I'm not saying kill them but yeah stop running their ideologies and school system and letting them indoctrinate people take that that is really I hate to say it I'm going into part of my suggestion too but there are just some professors and fake psychologists and psychiatrists you can't tolerate to keep them in those positions that's why you can't get anywhere that's why you can't accomplish anything in your culture you you are leaving the gangrene you're not cutting it off you're not putting in any antibiotics in the spot where the gangrene is actually is so if human humankind our culture is like a body you're just leaving this gangrene in here to infest the whole body and we can't get healthy we're not a, we're not addressing the root problems and issues so Sorry to get off track. In this case, I feel kind of was more than was necessary, unlike some of the others. So, again, when you're when buddy, fifteen year old Ryan goes and exposes uh, Jim or Parthapan or whatever your name is to porn, he needs to be punished, and he needs to be helped as well. There needs to be a proper system of punishment and discipline and simultaneously um, re-education for that. He needs to really he needs to be punished with something that actually affects him and also receive an education that helps him understand why he's being punished and that's in his own best interest and be set free from the ideologue that's enslaved him, whatever it is. And for that you can't have a mere system. You can have a general systematic thing. You can have a lot of recommendations and ideologues that will combat the one that was initially installed that was wrong. But you need personal relationship. You need teachers and guardians to get into that person's life who actually care. So massive part is your culture has to care about one another. Um, it has to. You have to have love your neighbor as yourself being um, proliferated more, and this concept of survival of the fittest being proliferated less. Uh, narration is very important. That basic upbringing makes a difference. Um, so what else? Oh yeah, sexual predators. Let's get into that. Especially child sexual predators. And, that, and then you guys, you have to have the debate whether you treat a child sexual predator and like a predator who preys on to like rape a adult woman the same or not and vice versa. You've got to figure out the legislative and legal and moral law system for that that actually works and I don't think what you have is working or if it did work it's certainly not being followed properly whatever it is. You have to figure that out. Um, and I will give you my honest opinion. In the very least the child sexual predators we've, we've obviously been way too lenient on them. And I don't care if they're under 18, they still need an incredibly severe punishment. There, there needs to be discipline to create the fear. And yes, I'm not saying punishment should be separated for a, from a sort of redeemial system, or if, if that's the right word or pronounced right. Um, some system to save the soul of these people that Christian concept I don't disagree with that I think we've made a mistake though I think that again stemming from a wrong concept of the relationship of grace and law 
we've immediately assumed you can just get all lub lub and happy lovey dovey with these people so to speak that we can just grace them up when they still haven't suffered any kind of mental emotional pain uh, to really rein in the fact that they've done something wrong and they're suffering because they've done something wrong and that it just simply actually is wrong and the wrong cannot continue and yeah Jesus blood cannot cover an infinity of wrongs you can't just keep doing the same behavior you've got to get rid of your fake Christianity in the very least that's not helping anyone you've got to start making a punitive system that has all the elements of it's punishing and making it basically so much agony to do that to do those offenses that the vast majority if you don't think that people are supposed to terrorize criminal culture you are wrong because and especially if you're a Christian and you think you you love Jesus but you don't because Jesus Bible actually says that the law keepers if they actually would properly keep the law the people teaching the rules rightly you know the people who care about society they the government when it's functioning rightly will be a terror to evildoers so the people who want to take four-year-old girls and finger their vaginas the, the the government is supposed to terrorize them yeah if you think otherwise you're wrong already you you've literally you have no chance to have a culture with at least less sexual predators let alone none because you think you can't terrorize those people and they will they then they'll be fine you can just reason with them talk to them without a force of terror to keep those people in check they will not be kept in check no matter how much you speak you can quote John 3:16 all you want till the cows come home they're still going to rape your 4-year-old daughter and make her have sex with a a horse and with a dog yeah John 3:16 alone will get you nowhere that's not enough that will not save your culture. That alone, John 3.16 is important, but that alone will not save your culture. You must have punitive laws for these kind of levels of predator. And it must be something really severe. And you have to have the death sentence debate. And love it or not, and I'm not saying we should have the death sentence because I'm trying my best to find a concept of how to apply the laws that we just simply and I'm sorry many of the Christians they don't know dumb jack diddly squat about mosaic law they think they know everything they know nothing at all they have barely studied it they don't know many of the laws that worked for dealing with the predators that are where where they are even found in their own Bible what the function was but I'm gonna tell you something I don't like death penalties either, but I, if you think the death penalty cultures had more crime than a culture that graces over everything and never can inflict any punishment or application of law like that at all, you're, you're drunk out of your wits and you don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you necessarily need, I believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, I don't think you necessarily need a death penalty, but you do need a severe, severe penalty for the sexual predators, and especially for the child sexual predators. So do I think 10 years in a prison with bailouts and all this, and getting fed a porridge and a steak, and some Catholic pastor comes and tells you you're you might not be as bad as you think and it's it's a great time that's gonna work no I don't think that at all I'm not even sure that's a good enough punishment for the 14 year olds who offend and exposing to people to pornography um, though probably maybe okay maybe three or four years of hard labor in prison or something we gotta figure some out and again you then you have the problem of prisons keeping the prisoners away from raping each other and whether that's worth it or not or whether that's part of the experience of the suffering I don't think I think prisons should be managed well I don't think prisons should be completely chaotic 
I think there should be a lot of suffering and hard labor in a prison. It's not meant to be a time of delight. But do I think that prisoners should be able to just rape someone who bends over to pick up the soap they dropped? I think if prisons were managed well properly, that would, that would not be a proverb in culture. Don't drop the soap. Uh, I don't think that's the, 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 the morality system of the, the divine law keeper and law giver um, who created our universe was, well, you know what? Prisons will be just such a crappy, rape-filled place that you'll learn your lesson when you go to one. I just think we haven't managed them well. And I think we have this mistake. We're either babying or, or we're either tolerating radical grace abuse babying or just going to radical law abuse and, and callousness. And you need some kind of healthy balance with both a grace and a law concept. They're not in conflict. Grace and law were never in conflict, only to the insane fake Christians and uh, people who have no concept of how a morality and legal system and law system work. Only to drunkards was there ever a conflict. But the general rule of thumb is grace and law have kissed. They're like husband and wife in a loving family and they never even fight each other. Grace and law are not at war and they're not contradictory concepts. They help feed the end result and the purpose and meaning of your life. So we need stricter punishment and we need more classification for when we can actually enact a punishment and more ability to actually get there without all the corruption and lawlessness and all the things that are creating all the corruption and systems that interfere with the bringing in of what we need. We need that stuff broken down and moved out of the way. Absolutely. We've got to start taking steps in the right direction. If we don't, we will never ever get there at any point. So, we've got to talk about law and punishment in the context of child predators and also in the context, so again, your first thing, exposing people under 18 to pornography under any context regardless of what type of pornography i don't care if it's featuring a fully nude man penetrating or a japanese hentai image with a nude you know woman who which is like censored vagina or something like that i literally don't care any of it crime i'm almost not even sure we should classify because then people are like okay let's let's play the game okay this type of image is a lesser offense than this type of image i think when you get into that uh, ideologue you're you're kind of becoming too caring because one you're going to resource you're going to waste a lot of resources and money on ass investigating that question you have evidence of any of the type of pornography pornography it's almost easier to treat it all the same in this way and say you expose them you're punished but then some kid's consideration might be needed because yeah the 15 year old who exposes your or the 18 year old or the or the 40 year old bearded fat guy or whatever they are who exposes your 15 year old child to one a pornography image featuring a heterosexual couple married engaging in sexual intercourse versus the one who exposes an image of someone having sexual intercourse with a dog the trauma and the damage and the mental illness might not be exactly the same between the two. It wouldn't be dishonest to say that. But is it worth it again? That's a debate you've got to have. If you've never had that question, if somebody, some jerkwad claiming to be an authority saying you're asking the wrong questions about these kind of questions, they're wrong and they actually are part of the issue, um, you've got to get them out of the way and you've, you do have to start asking those questions. Don't listen to people on the payroll of the pornography industry. They'll never get you any good or get you anywhere. Uh, they get you your children raped and cut into pieces. That's all they've been delivering us for the past decades. So, child sexual predators must be severely, severely punished. You have to start thinking up of laws that will fix this. 
ideally can you can are you able to find a law that is not a death penalty and yet terribly horrifying for them where maybe it's a prison time that's so much slave labor involved that this person is repaying culture and some monetary value doing something meaningful where they are not having a fun time where they understand they are suffering for causing years of suffering with this dumb act that has set into motion a whole sequence of events that has traumatized someone and completely damaged their life, exposed them to mental illnesses they would have never had to struggle with, basically disabled them in many ways potentially, potentially crippled them, give them a struggle they didn't need to have. Yeah, that person now needs to suffer for it. Without that suffering, nothing gets better. The people trying to protect them from that suffering are protecting your culture from purging itself of the murder and rape scenarios that are happening. And it's the same thing for all sexual predators and rapists everywhere, under every definition and every gender. So there's no legal legalese battle footing around, well, what if a woman drugged a man and used his male genital or tried to use it to peer pressure him into marrying her? Maybe that doesn't count because it's her body who bears the suffering of childbirth and it's less painful and traumatic for the man. You take away someone's sovereignty to make that decision from them, you, you should be treated as a rapist. No pussyfooting around anymore. No, no playing the game. The people who play the legal game, just shut them down. Don't tolerate them. Don't Just don't tolerate 10 seconds of it. Shut down the legal dance moves these people are doing to try to evade what's right. Shut it down. And that should be like, if we ever become activists and we make like a catchphrase to get behind on this topic, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. And the pornography and sexual exploitation industry should be feeling like, you know, when, when Negan walks in, he says, I will shut that poop down. Um, they should feel like the wrath of the people is against them like that and like impending disasters upon them. They should be very intimidated. Right now, they're not intimidated at all. They're having the time of their life and they need to be intimidated. So when the predators are back in a state of terror and being terrorized in general where only a radical few dare act out and every time they act out they're made an example of what happens and notwithstanding the debate whether there are some radical scenarios where you must institute a death penalty or not because maybe there's something so extreme where maybe only a death penalty is applicable a guy who did who who raped and killed 50 girls I understand Christian interests more than anyone having read the Bible multiple times over, but I'm sorry. You're only, you probably the only time you're going to convert that guy to Jesus is when he's on death row. Yeah, and by the way, I'd say that should be a critical part of culture. Anywhere where if you do implement any lethal punishment, you should permit this person to hear from some religious persons or groups. I don't think you should be so angry at them on that level that, well, this guy's about to die for it. I don't think you should have a heart that he has no right to hear a gospel or any good news of or any speech about a eternal life. Let him have that. Give him that much dignity. That's fine. But yeah, a death sentence for extreme cases, I'm personally not against it. It, cre it creates so much fear of the offense. It does so much to restrict the offense. The people saying it doesn't work, they don't know what they're talking about and they haven't studied history because the cultures that did it had a decrease in those crimes. You got to get tough on the crime. You've got to make it a suffering experience for the people who do these things. They've got to feel that it was, and they have to understand. You have to help them understand. You have to make a system that 
basically if it doesn't help them understand it for forces them to understand that they are in the scenario of their anguish they are in the prison doing incredibly hard miserable labor working like a slave for not even to reap the financial benefit because they went and raped a four-year-old girl and by the way some of you people you want slaves and I hate the idea in general and some of you you try to make a caste system the only person who deserves to be a slave and work to, for no benefit from themselves is the person who's basically raping and killing little girls and boys but if you wanna if you wanna if you need a slave for your crappy business so much maybe look there at the criminals maybe they're there to help you and to serve you now but don't make criminals artificially by the way don't fall into some other stupid idea oh that's a great idea and if I get more people to offend I have more slaves wrong attitude that's not right either but yeah yeah I mean you might as well put the criminals in the prisons to a good use don't just make them mindlessly what what kind of a task is this here's a rock hit this rock what are we gonna do with the rock we throw it in some quarry junkyard and we're not even using it for anything maybe if we're lucky we cut it into some pieces that goes in somebody's patio don't make them do stuff that's not profiting anyone and it's completely useless but make them do stuff that they don't reap the personal benefit of in the time when they've done a severe penalty so they feel yeah yeah this behavior cost me and I have no problem making discernments between different people in prison like if one guy's offense is of a certain level and he actually gets some you know he gets some Quaker oats and a television or a book and a half decent a, a somewhat comfy bed based on the act the reasons and the accusations he's in there are not of the same severity and level as guy X is different from guy Y in the prison and maybe they're in different sections of the prison I don't have a problem with that but with all that said there is a balance to tough being tough on crime and anyone who thinks I'm naive is this what do you do about false accusations you bring in severe severe penalties and rare occasions of a death penalty what do you happen what do you do when somebody makes a false accusation I will tell you something humble yourself and learn from the Hebrews you think you know better than them you don't they had a brilliant law for this you know what it was let me tell you how biblical law for false accusation worked and this is why the Ten Commandments by the way was not the only law in the Bible for false accusation in the Torah so to speak they dealt with these problems before you did you think those are ug ug cavemen and you know better than them you know nothing at all and you're uneducated and ignorant and you need to humble yourself you're not hot stuff and you're not the intellectual gift of God to the world neither if you're a man or a woman whatever you think you are you're not they had a way of dealing with false accusations and it wasn't just don't falsely accuse your neighbor what you see in the Ten Commands, Commandments that's not the full story of false accusation that's not how the Hebrews dealt with it do not do not do not like a parent but had no power to do anything when somebody did it anyways you know what happened in biblical law when somebody falsely accused someone you know what the rule was you know what the law was okay let's imagine you're living in Hebrew culture you're under Yahwistic law the laws of the Torah and the Bible and it says rape is a death penalty and women love that concept usually very few only the naive Stockholm syndrome ones usually feel too uncomfortable with it there are some bloodthirsty ones that are kind of like it too much it'll just like watching people die but most sensible sensible women I think you'll find if somebody does it they're kind of sad about the whole thing but they're grateful the law is there to protect them and it worked but what happened when some jerkwad psychopath evil trash useless garbage of a woman just for the sake of being mischief or trying to gain someone's estate according to some evil scheme for example falsely accuses a man of rape and now they're trying to put a death sentence on him is is it end there well no they always have an informal investigation according to a properly functional court of law 
and whether the matter is true or not. What happens when it's undeniably proven it was a false accusation? Reversal. Guess what now just happened to the woman who falsely accused a man of a, penal uh, a crime that bears a death penalty? Guess what penalty she just incurred? Death penalty. And I hate any any woman who's like doesn't like that concept. Like, no! I do not respect them. Because the only thing saying no, in my opinion, is the exact spirit that wants to think it's it should have wiggle room to do that on occasion. Can you convince me that it's otherwise? Yeah. Yeah, the Hebrews knew a heck of a lot. Their moral system which you should take seriously that they claim came from some kind of divine entity because it really looks that way. Yeah, it had a lot of wisdom in it. It still has a lot of wisdom in it. Punish false accusations with the, pro the crime, the, the weight of the crime they're trying to bring on someone and you snap the people who think they can make light of it right out of their stupid head into reality. Be tough on crime doesn't mean false accusations becomes a weapon. It means when you terrorize the evildoer, the false accuser is just as much the evildoer as the rapist. You terrorize all of them equally. Evil should be terrorized. You think you can leave evil to this little border and it's all going to be fine, but it's really a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Leave the evildoers alone to their own devices and they are coming to terrorize you. And that is not me forcing an artificial conflict narrative. The nature of evildoers is to find pleasure in torturing people, basically. To find pleasure in undermining the very things that make you a healthy, sane, functional, self-sovereign human being. They like to take that away. They want to make you less than a human. They want to make you achieve less than what you were meant to be and have in life. They want to make it impossible. They don't just want to torture you in the sense of, they don't want to just take away the dreams from you and the ideals, the concept of the way life should be that's actually right. They actually, they're so sick and sadistic, they want to leave you with the concept of what you could have had in an ideal world make it impossible to achieve it and let you feel the suffering of constantly knowing theoretically this thing that should is a lot happier of a system and a lot better to experience should be possible but I can never achieve it no matter how hard I work at it because of the system they impose on you. Sicko, saddest criminals like to torture people. Get that through your head and they only stop the, Christians running around on your street corners preaching John 3.16 does not stop them. It does nothing about them. Anyone be believes otherwise is a nutcase. And, all, and you Christians, you should know better. Read the book of Revelation. You know who Satan's scared of? Not a few Christians singing carols and quoting John 3.16. The ones who both have the word and the testimony but also keep his commandments and part of his commandments revolves around a proper concept of a justice system to actually use in your society with no law you have no basis of anything you can have the grace and the you can say Jesus Jesus all you want you have a concept that you can be light and have no law and be so light on those psychopaths and that oh maybe they're not really psychopaths they're just misunderstood you've turned your society into ashes and dust nothing more now the ideological root of your problems the West accepted Darwin and Marx as competent that is your problem spawning this. It traded off morality systems of more competent people like the Hebrews and the Christians for less competent garbage of the delusional, anti-theistic fools who had no concept of how to run a society in any functional way or, or any concept of why that's important. That's what happened. You better face the music. And by the way, I'm already at the 1 hour 40 minute mark. I promised to make this last in series, so I can't even give you all the details. So I can't do all your work for you in this video if you're stubborn on that concept. But I'll try to break it down for you, and I'm going to expect that if you're taking this seriously, you better value to do some of the study yourself and verify what I say. 
because it's it's seriously true okay Darwinism introduced it did not introduce science and it is not science Charles Darwin evolution survival of the fittest is not science it is an ideological system get that through your head it's a it's a it could be science it could not be science concept it has to be analyzed it is a theory but it create it is an ideology it creates a whole moral ideologue anyone thinking that Darwin is just a concept of biological history of observing that biological history of humans and creatures that is not what it is you see the problem is the consequence of that is the narration of human origins brought in by Darwinism erases the concept of a creator and simultaneously a moral lawgiver and no moral law, you're screwed. You can no longer condemn rape without a moral law and you cannot establish moral law without a moral lawgiver and you can't have that through a human institutions because you get the human institutions and you have a series of debate between clearly corrupted and corruptible individuals who decide one day they hate rape, next day they like rape, and one day they want to have a religion that allows it, one day they want to have a religion that disallows it. Your problem is you keep appealing to a human authority, period. Darwin and Marx, the, the, these are the sources of your problems. Darwin's idea has introduced the idea that goes contrary to historical narratives that establish a difference between human and animal. So let me set the record straight. Divine law, human up here, chihuahua down here, different classes. And this is this human up here, this one little baby human girl who needs her diaper changed outweighs basically the whole animal kingdom in sacredness and importance. Yes. Yes, that's a very real thing. Her eternal, she is understood to have an eternal destiny, not a temporal destiny. In other words, the concept of the afterlife, that was important. Oh yeah, concept of an afterlife, life after death and after death judgment had something to do with our sexuality. Maybe the increase in rape has something to do with the fact that we mocked that, looked down on that, belittled that, thought we knew it better than that, mocked the Christians, mocked the Jews, mocked the Muslims, and anybody had any concept of that, and now we have more rape than ever. Don't be a smart person in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes and expect to be respected and never mocked and think you can do it to everyone else. Yeah, this is all an issue out of that. Moral law, moral law giver, divine creator, divine law. This is the issue our culture is struggling with. And the difference between a human and animal. And don't tell me you think that's not related to the obviously insane radical vegans. And especially don't tell me you don't think that's not related to some amount of the argumentation that it should be legal for a human to have sexual acts with an animal. The concept that an animal is sentient. That, in other words, humans evolved to this level, but they were once down on this level. Therefore, these things down here are equally sacred because if we don't interfere with them, in a million years they can be up here. And we should help them get there. That's moral. So we can have a Star Trek-like universe. All this aliens evolution delusion. Can it and throw it in the, with the feces in the toilet, flush the toilet down and get rid of your garbage? Because it's nice fiction, it makes a nice video game or a nice movie, but it's just fiction. That has nothing to do with legislating, more, legislating moral law and how you should rule on human sexuality concepts, period. It has no authority in that realm. It has no business. The people that are, that is their Eden, that is the thing, that kind of future dystopian sci-fi world is their new Jerusalem and they're all enamored in this. They have no business being in any place of a lawyer, a lawmaker, a legislator, or a teacher and a professor of anything to do with these things or concept of an argument of what should be done for society. They are not qualified. As Illidan says, in the burning crusade you are not prepared if you are of that ideological understanding you are not on the level to be doing that you are disqualified you don't even have the basic requirements for that line of office that's just how it is 
You will not get a functional society with that. This is the fundamental problem. A he, the, you have two stupid arguments. One, you have confused, stupid Darwinist spin-offs. You're trying to condemn people for eating chicken. You are trying to condemn people for eating chicken. You have neo-Marxist nutcases taking advantage of that because guess what? What did Chairman Mao do? What did Marxist Mao do? What did Marxist Stalin do? They try to starve out the populace they feel is a threat. So guess what? If we can make everyone believe they're immoral for eating chicken and help them decrease their consumption of food so they start getting skinnier and weaker, that maybe helps Marxism a bit, you think? Like, you think there's no agenda? Like, all those radical vegan types who are have a Darwinian inclination weren't indoctrinated by some stupid stuff. And the, and the ones that are Hindu, I don't care. Hindu spindu. I like Hindu people. But when you start trying to force that crappy law on everyone else, I don't respect it. And I am not obliged to respect it. And they have no authority to do this in the West. None. They have enough land mass. If they want to have some radical vegan religion, there's more than a land, enough land mass back there in some parts of the Far East to do that that are already doing that. And if you want that, you can just go there. And it's not racist to say. It doesn't work. We've seen India. We've seen what happens in the concept of when people are demonized for eating beef. You have starving, skinny people born into the untouchable caste who don't... If they, they're raped, it's basically not rape because they're less than a human being because they're whatever stupid idea, they're reincarnated of a criminal or whatever they believe. And eating the cow could possibly save them from starving to death, but they're going to sit there by a, a, a unclean river dying of starvation while a friggin' cow walks around eating the grass that they wish they could eat. No, you people who think that's okay is sick. Is And am I stereotyping all Hinduism and Hindu people and Indian people that way? No, but it really does happen and you've got to deal with it. Yes, uneducated Marxists and people who are either know about that and are pretending and want to make an oppressive culture here or are sadistic, or else people who are pretending they know what goes on there and we should implement that all here. They don't know diddly squat. It makes no difference. You have no authority trying to manifest legislation upon us. Period. So, we will eat our chicken. By the way, I believe in the biblical laws of clean and unclean. And I don't care if that offends you, but I won't force it down your throat. So personally, I won't eat pork. But if it matters to say to you this, our culture has full authority to eat to eat um, whatever they want that's meat, chicken, pork, um, all those things. I would recommend you follow the clean and unclean laws because, yeah, again, without that, how do you demonize someone who eats a dog? Fair argument. Who's the moral authority on what meets is acceptable and what's not? By the way, we have scientific evidence backing some of the clean and unclean laws of the Bible, if not all of them. We've had a zoologist who actually has no bias because he's a vegan. Yeah, a Christian, but really a vegan Christian doing this. And finding, oh, well, guess what? Oh, those animals on the higher trophic level and the scavengers that always were called unclean. Oh, Higher biotoxin levels. We're discovering this under microscope. Big surprise, everyone. And oh, by the way, it doesn't look like the. It's suddenly the pork transforms for the goyim, the the Gentile, so it's edible for him, but not edible. But for the Jew, it poisons the Jew. We have no evidence of that. We have ed evidence of it makes the Jew sick. It makes the goy sick. Yeah, yeah, that's the evidence we're finding scientifically. And that gets oppressed by idiot pastors even, pardon my language. Like, what do you expect from me? You, you want me to compliment you while you censor facts? And somehow, like, worship you and fall at your feet and, and praise you? Like, what do you want from me? Like, if you can't... The only reason we get angry and start sounding rude and disrespectful is because we've been treated like absolute trash and garbage, like subhumans, 
by a bunch of people who think they're God's gift on earth, they're the know-it-alls, who have clearly demonstrated that they aren't even capable of running a business, let alone a government and a country. Who don't have the right scale of moral values to make proper decisions and have fogged up minds inhibited with all kinds of stupid ideas and drugs and diseases from some of the behaviors. Like, I'm not interested in opinions on law and legislation from somebody who's struggling with the idea of whether it's okay to shove feces in a woman's vagina or not. I really, I have nothing to hear from you. You have nothing to say to me on that. You have literally no position, no authority, and no value to contribute to that conversation. There is no, in terms of conversation there, there is none. Okay, Darwin's concept introduces the ideas that humans are just animals. It therefore directly reduces the sacredness of life, it reduces meaning of life, it reduces concept of eternal life and ju eternal judgments pending on how you meted out your temporal life. Therefore people lose fear of punishment for rape and things like that. And again, you don't terrorize the criminals, what happens? They do the crimes. It's a simple concept. It almost, first, I personally believe we have tons of evidence there's a God, but it's not a God or not issue so much. Even if there was no evidence that there was a God, it was just a made-up concept, it still somehow seems to work better than the alternative system, which is basically people make moral ph philosophical argumentation or pseudo-moral philosophical edu arguments of why it's good to eat their own feces and make a four-year-old girl have sex with dog for entertainment. Do you really want to go there? Do we really need to do that and have that conversation? No, we don't. Humans are not animals. And morality, there is moral authority in the universe and you have to deal with it. And that moral authority does kind of know what they're doing. Quite a lot better than you do, clearly. The moral power that commanded the stars of the heaven each into their place and orchestrated all the times and the seasons and calculated the positioning of every atom and scripted the coding for our the program of our human genetic code is a little bit more qualified than you who cannot even create a code for a simple 2D puzzle game without getting errors you have to work through. You are not prepared and you are not qualified and it's time for you to step down. You have no authority on these issues. Now what about Karl Marx? Anyone who thinks, by the way, what's a Marxist institution that's popular in our time? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist institution and they have nothing to do with helping black people seeing that Karl Marx was literally a racist. He did not respect black people. He had the same racist tendency of Darwin, this evolutionary uh, kind of language. Um, he basically addresses them since he comes from the same land and the same kind of language tactics. We know what he's talking about in the dangerous class clause. So he really calls black people passive rotting mass, ma passive rotting mass social scum. He thinks they're less evolved and not human and dehumanizes them therefore. I'm not interested in Karl Marx's opinion on black people and I'm not interested in a African Canadian Marxist's opinion on how they're going to save the black race because they can't even save themselves from a racist they're worshipping. No, I'm not going there. And I'm not respecting that or listening to that. These people have no authority. They have no mentality to solve these issues. They don't have, they are not prepared. Marxism, communism, abolishes morality and religion. Morality means moral law. Moral law means Hey, you young men, don't rape the women, don't rape the girls, don't rape the boys, and vice versa, and all that other stuff. If you think you have no social chaos, if you legalize Marxism and teach it in every place, 
you are a fool. And the only people mocking and saying, haha, they say it'll only produce social law chaos and lawlessness, are the Marxist psychopathic psychiatric influencers, like certain person like Brock Kissom, former director general of the World Health Organization, the only ones mocking that concept are fools like them because the end result is there's no debate on this anymore. We've been letting the Marxists run things for some time now. We've let them have multiple na attempts to run nations and they've only produced the same exact result every time. And now they're going to make the false promise to you, well, we have new technology now. Yeah, you know what that's going to do? Oh, so before in Vietnam, when we had Viet Cong, and by the way, if you're going to try to contest me on whether it was good for America to be, in, be there or not, understand that this has nothing to do with that debate or not, or, or not right now. I am not talking about Vietnam. I am talking about Viet Cong. And Viet Cong does not represent technically all Vietnamese people and their ideal interests. But let's talk about what the communists and the communist conspirators did in Vietnam. They made an information and tracking network and they tracked down every person who was not, who was basically pro-freedom, pro-free markets, pro uh, limiting government interference from certain matters and they tracked them down and killed them. So what happens when I get technological developments? Now I have a security camera everywhere, I have facial recognition everywhere. Oh, Marxism will work now. Oh, good, now we can track down the people we want to kill better. It changes nothing. You cannot give technology into the hands of a glorified man-child with no will for any good at all and expect that it means and counts for anything at all. They can, they can promise you the sun, moon, and the stars and space colonies and they can never deliver anything other than the same crap they've always delivered you, the current filth you've seen in your pornography we've been covering. They can hand you people trying to teach you that women should be putting maggots in their vagina. That's all they can give you. So wake up to that reality and just deal with it because this is not coming from, you know, I don't like everything in the Quran even. I don't like everything in all these other religions. We fight among ourselves and Christians fight among ourselves with our very sex. But I'll tell you, as and I would never endorse Chris Lam or, or an alliance between a group that has the audacity to say that they think they know God and God has no son. But I still on some level respect the Muslims. And I'll admit this. You know what? This concept is not coming from the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims. And it's not coming from at least a great deal of theistic and monotheistic belief systems. All this stuff that's causing you so much suffering. Yes. Is there issues and debates there? Are there? Is there historical crusades and all kinds of wrongdoings you got to examine? Yeah, but right now that is not currently what's killing you. What's currently killing you right now in this moment, right here and now, is this stuff, and it's not coming from them. It's coming from those two clowns, the Darwin, the Marx, the social anti-theism. This is coming from if you have theism side of the fence with their internal fights. Don't you dare think you're qualified to judge them. All this crap you're dealing with right now is really coming from your side of the fence primarily. You can't, you can't clean their house. You don't even have a house to clean anymore from following those guys. They have literally stripped your house from right under your feet. They have taken your underwear away. They have publicly made you nude and have made you a tool of sucking on the sexual parts of literally animals. That's what they've done to you. Ideologies matter. Ideological systems matter. Darwin and Marx has been taught in much of our public schools as an a priori fact in the system of truth that we should follow. And it is not and has delivered us only death and sickness and STDs. Get rid of it and you'll fix culture very quickly.